from the APC to the PDP and back to the APC. Dogara faces court action that could sack him from his seat. And children voting in the Kano local government elections. Nigerians are not happy. Why is this happening yet again? Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, is asking the Federal High Court in Abuja to declare vacant the seat of the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara. The senator, who is representing Das, Tafawa Balewa, and Bogoro Federal Constituency in Bolchi State, defected from the APC to the PDP before the last general election and won re-election to the House on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. In July of 2020, he, however, returned to the APC. The PDP is contending that, right now, by virtue of the Constitution, Dugara ought to have vacated the seat for defecting from the party that sponsored him to the Ninth Assembly before the expiration of his tenure. Well, joining us to have this conversation is a legal practitioner. Uh, his name is Raymond Nkanebe. And of course, uh, joining us is the PDP deputy spokesperson. He is the Dep deputy national publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Diron Odeyemi. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much. It's my privilege to be here with you today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Diron, because you are the complainant here. You are uh, asking that um, Mr. Dugara vacates his seat because he came into that office um, on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Um, I'd like to start by asking, has there been any precedence as to anyone who defected because in a situation such as Dogara's that actually um, finally got that seat vacated. Has it ever happened? Thank you very much for the question. That it has never happened before is never an indication that cannot be challenged. That something has never happened before is not an indication that it is right. That something has never happened before is never to say that it is logical. What we are doing as a responsible opposition is to sanitize our democracy. It is not logical for anybody to contest for a political position under the banner of a political party and having attained that, decide to defect to another party. Where democracy is being practiced all over the world, we don't believe this is the idea thing. Apart from the legal aspect of it, we believe it is morally wrong. Since there has not been any, since uh, INEC has not recognized individual candidature, you have to contest for a position under the banner of a political party. And that is why there is no single name of an aspirant on the ballot paper. You aspire and you contest using the political party. So if it is morally right and it is just to, okay, if you are leaving the party, then you leave the position through which you are, through which you came. So, you, so what we are saying, in practical terms, is to ask for a legitimate demand. So it's now left for the legal and of it to say what we are demanding for is right or it is wrong. Interesting for you to mention morals in this thing called politics. In, in Nigerian politics, I mean, Morals are thrown literally out the window, for a better way to say it. I mean, so morals does not necessarily have a role to play in this issue, and that's why you're going to court, because if we were doing this based on morals, then there are lots of things that would not be, um, you know, water under the bridge. You know what I mean, sir? So now that you're... I, I, understand, I understand what you're saying perfectly well. Now if there is no moral in politics, then we have to start from somewhere in Nigeria. And you think that this is the best case to talk about morals, this particular oh, one? Of course, yes. Interesting. Of course, yes. I, I, I'd like, I'd like we to... are bringing it out for Nigerians to see, for the law to look into. 
So whatever is going to be the outcome is going to go into record as an history. But it's better done than being left unchallenged. Let me, let me push you a little further. If the tables were turned, okay. and this is not in any way meaning that I'm playing the devil's advocate for uh, the former speaker. If the tables were turned and the speaker was moving from the APC to the PDP, would you still be sounding this way and talking about morals? What we are talking about is not about APC or PDP. We are talking no, about no, no. democracy. No, no. This, this is a straightforward no, no, question. No, no, no. I, if I'm the tables were turned, you would you understand. be sounding like this? If it's like PDP, it's time condemnable. It's quite condemnable. But if this were happening in your case, sir, would you be sitting on this show talking about morals and you know setting an example with the speaker or the former speaker? What I'm saying cuts across the board, and it's about democracy in Nigeria. And it's better to sanitize it than to allow it to do it in our own way. That's exactly what I'm saying. It is not about whether it is our turn now or it is because Dogara left the party. No. Interesting. Let me go to the lawyer. Uh, Mr. Raymond Kanebe, uh, in, in, in 2020, in November 2020, Senator uh, Abel defected from the APC to the PDP. Um, same 2020, Imo State Speaker Collins Chiji and other lawmakers jumped ship um, to the ruling party. There was no, there was an uproar, of course, but we really didn't see any follow through. We didn't see a big deal as much as we're seeing in this case. Um, why is this such a big deal? And what does the law say in this uh, particular regard? Uh, as concerning former Speaker Dugara. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, as to whether why this particular scenario, why this particular instance is different from the past, well, I'm not sure it is different. Whenever we have this kind of this kind of uh, case of politicians defecting from one party to other, in the first few days, it is dominated in the media, and after that, they tend to fizzle out. But that is that as for that. In terms of the legal, uh, the legal dimensions or legal implications of this, mm -hmm. uh, let me start by um, correcting the impression by my friend that um, our jurisprudence is lacking in this area. As a matter of fact, as far back as um, in, say, in 1983, we've had situations of this kind. In the case of um, uh, Mohamed Goni, the then governor of Borno State in 1983, who was uh, disqualified by the then Electoral Commission, PEDECO, on the ground that um, he had defected from the party that, that, that sponsored him. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Supreme Court gave a pronouncement and said that uh, in terms of Section 64, Subsection 1 of the then 1979 Constitution, that a person who defects from his political party, another political party, without any division in, this, in his own party, stands to lose his seat. So uh, our laws are, are replete with cases where this kind of situation has played out, and the Supreme Court has had to cause certain politicians to lose their seats. Let me give you the latest example of 2015. That was in, in Ondo State. That is the case of Honorable Abe Gunde and the Ondo State House of Assembly. Honorable Abe Gunde was elected under the platform of the, of the Labour Party. And then he decamped or he defected to the then ACN. Then when members of his party uh, started to, well, there was an uproar around his defection, he rushed to the court and asked the court to interpret the provisions of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That is, section 68, subsection 1G of the Constitution, mm -hmm. asking the court to, uh, to determine that in the circumstances in which he left his party, that is the Labour Party to ACN, is he to lose his seat. And the Supreme Court, after a holistic consideration of that case, found that um, uh, Mr. Bedinde should lose his seat because he was trying to rely on the exception in Section 68, Subsection 1G, which says that you can defect, but only when there is a division in your party. Now, it leads, it leads, me, it leads, it leads me to the question, because the, the excuse of a governor misbehaving is the meat of the matter here for um, former Speaker Dogara. So I'm putting yeah. it to you now. 
Is an excuse for the governor's misbehavior good enough reason for a person to defect or move to another party? Is that good enough grounds? And what, what constitutionally well, is good enough grounds for a person to move from party A to party B? Well, uh, at the risk of preempting uh, the action which is in court, um, but uh, in terms of the language of the constitution, uh, the ground that they relied upon to defect is not one that is uh, that is um, envisaged under the Constitution. What the Constitution envisages is that there has to be a division in the national organ of the party. Not at the state level, not at the world level, not at the polling unit level. It has to be a division at the national organ of the party. But, but I'd, like to, I'd like to point you to what happened in Akwaibom State. You, we all remember with Senator uh, Goswil Akwabio. There was not necessarily um, a problem, per se, in the party when he moved. But then he did move, and he still did retain his seat, didn't he? Well, he did. The case of uh, uh, Honorable um, uh, Senator Akwabio in 2014, in, in 2018, 2019, who defected on the eve of the 2019 elections to the other side, it was a matter that went to court. And unfortunately, the persons who took that matter to court didn't have the, what we call the local standard to present the case. And that was why the self-same justice, Oko Abba, before whom this case, this current case is before, uh, dismissed their suit. So the matter was not, um, was not determined on the merit because of the lack of local standard in the in the as in the side of the NGO that is that are to that matter to court. So unfortunately, there wasn't any determination uh, on the merits of that matter. So that's the distribution scenario. But the circumstances in which uh, Senator Fabio and the other senators then relied upon to defect at the time is something that, in my view, is close to a division, given what we understood of the crisis in their party at the time. I am of the view that if that matter had gone to court and, be, and being determined on the merit, uh, uh, it would be one of the exceptions under the constitution where they wouldn't have lost their seats. Interesting. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Dira. Um, the yeah. APC has just put out a statement saying that um, they don't necessarily recognize um, the former speaker, Dugara, as their member, being that his name is not on their register. What does that mean for him politically? And what does that mean for you as your party, especially when you have a case in court? Perhaps they know the implication of uh, his defection. And they know what is likely to be the consequences. And that is why they are trying to maneuver things and use that as an excuse that is not registered. If he has defected and he made it public and he did that on the floor of the house, what else do we need? to be convinced that he is already their member. So when we get to court, we, it's an aspect that our legal team will have to look into. And I want to believe it's just an excuse to see if they can escape, you know, uh, Uganda losing the seats. But we leave everything to court. So it's not an excuse as far as we are concerned. Why, why all of a sudden, because I mean, I and the lawyer, we just rolled out names and scenarios that are the same as this. Uh, is this a thing that the PDP is going to keep doing going forward, knowing that, I mean, in Nigeria, our political parties don't necessarily have ideologies per se. We don't have Republicans. We don't have Democrats. There are no clear-cut ideologies, so it's easier to cross cap at, at any time. Is this what the PDP is trying to do going forward to either keep their people in check or just to deter these kind of things from happening ever again? Just like I said, it is not about PDP and it's not about APC. It's about our democracy. We don't want a situation whereby we're doing things wrongly and we term it our own special way of doing things. We will call it homegrown democracy. It's only when we want to when we want to have a shortcut to to democracy that you know we that we coin a name to suit our purpose. This is wrong. And as a credible opposition, we believe it is high time we sanitize our democracy. Not a situation whereby somebody will just wake up in the morning and decide to go to another party holding the ticket of a, of a political party. We just want to bring a sanity to it. We don't want to become a laughing stock in the Committee of uh, Nations, whereby our own democracy will we, we not give uh, respect 
to office holders. That's exactly what we are doing. It's not about uh, APC, it's not about PDP, it's about bringing sanity to our democracy. And but, we have to start from somewhere. With due respect, Mr. Dero, did the PDP just realize that there had not been sanity in the political systems in Nigeria and then you're just waking up to understand that you need to be the ones to bring sanity because this has been a practice for so long. Did you just decide, I mean, let's talk about the case of Obaseki and the rest of them. It's not news. Did the PDP just wake up to this responsibility because 2023 is in the radar? Correct me if I'm wrong. We, we deserve an applause. Whether we are just starting or it has started or, you know, we just realize it. We just want to start from somewhere. So it, it, it doesn't matter if PDP has been doing it or if it has labeled PPD, PDP at the point in time. But what we are saying is, as far as our democracy is concerned, we need to sanitize it so as to move forward. In talking about sanitizing our democracy, looking at 2023 and all of the infightings, and it's not just, you know, like you said, it's not just the PD, about the PDP or the APC. There's a lot of infightings in our political parties and all of these infightings is for positions. How is the PDP going to guard against these kind of cracks in the parties? Is there any form of reconciliatory process that is going on now to keep everybody um, looking in the same direction, agreeing on the same things, without us sitting down here in the next three months or the next four months talking about the same thing from another perspective. You cannot rule out elements of crisis where you see one or two people aspiring for one position. Even in families, they are bound to be disputed, they are bound to be, you know, misunderstanding. You cannot rule it out. If I'm telling you, or if I'm assuring you that there's going to be an everlasting peace in any political party, it's a lie. We have our own issues, APC have their own issues, so also Labour and, 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 and NPP or whichever political party. It's normal in human nature. If you are aspiring, if other people are contesting with you, what then becomes of the, of the game is maneuvering, campaigning, seeking for support here and there. And in the course of doing that, there are bound to be misunderstandings. But what matters is the eventual management of that crisis that does not lose, it does not lead to the political, political party losing that particular position. And as far as we are concerned in PDP, you are aware that we have set up Senator Bukala Saraki, the Conciliation Committee, and they have been moving around the states. And we hope that very soon there will be a level of reconciliation and peace in PDP. One last question. This might be difficult for you to answer, might not be. If the speaker, former speaker, now that he's being somewhat disowned by the APC, does not necessarily find his foot in the APC and decides to come back to the PDP, will there be an open door for him to walk through? I am not to decide that, and it's been very difficult for me to answer. We have the National Working Committee, we have the National Executive Council, that we have to look into it and take a final decision. But, you know, a decision will be made. All right, Raymond, um, I'm coming back to you. Um, okay. Like you did say earlier on, most of these cases um, are determined by who brings the cases, what facts and proofs that they have uh, to plead their cause. I, I, and again, I, I know we're on a risk of talking about a case that is in court. Um, what are the chances that this would not be the same thing as we always see? you know, there's a 90% chance that this might just go the way it always goes? Or maybe this time that the PDP is in charge and they're pushing with all their power, maybe something might change. Let's not preempt a matter that's in court, but away from, you know, telling, preempting what is going to be in court. Do you see this coming out differently? Is the outcome going to be something different? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, from what I've read so far about the case, it seems to be a very straightforward case. I mean, the facts are not much in contention. Uh, last year, I also read in the media when uh, uh, the senator, when the, uh, when the member of House of Rep defected to to the to the APC, and of course, we also saw the letter he wrote to the World Chairman communicating the reason why he had to defect. So the facts are not much in, in controversy. And also, against what the law says, the law is very clear. 
I don't think there was a division in the, I don't think there has been a division in the A, in the PDP, in the quantum that the constitution and the cities that would give uh, uh, Dugara that leeway to walk away from the party. So I think for me, this is another opportunity that has been thrown to the judiciary, particularly Justice Okun Abba, before whom this matter was brought to in 2018, uh, in the case of um, uh, the self same Dugara and Akpabu uh, and the rest of other status who defected in the eve of the 2019 elections. Unfortunately, like I've explained before now, those who brought the matter to court was an NGO which lacked the local standard to ventilate that action. But in this case, uh, it appears to be that the party, that the PDP here, is the one making this case. So they are the right, they are the right parties to make such um, such case. So in, 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 in when you put what the law says and against the facts, I think, um, and I want to be optimistic, that uh, the PDP may have a chance in getting the 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 the, the, the better losing the seat. Finally, um, because we live in a, a country where trust is a, a very very expensive thing, no matter how the case goes, there's always someone who will cry foul, and then fingers will be pointed at the judiciary for not being balanced. And you know, we say that the judiciary is the last hope of a common man, but in these, you know, in certain cases, sometimes it never is. Can the judiciary be trusted going forward, knowing that we're going slowly into an election season, and of course, there will be several cases, maybe not the same as this, but then the courts will be flooded with several kinds of cases on election matters. Can we trust that the judiciary would be uh, as strong, as powerful, as unbiased as we expect them to be? Well, uh, I uh, thank you. I think uh, I have absolute faith and confidence in the judiciary and their impartiality. Let me tell you, as far as I'm concerned, that we have a democracy today is stands to the judiciary. We have seen very profound judgments and determination and pronouncements from the court. The courts have shown that it can be really independent, even when it considers political cases. So I think it's better to give the judiciary the benefits of the doubt and allow them to do their work. Those that in political cases, no matter how you decide them, there is only allegations of power play, as you have hinted. This is more, this is all the more so because the judiciary can only be seen, but it cannot be heard. So, Ray uh, Raymond, don't you think that the judiciary has also given room for these kinds of allegations and accusations of it not being balanced, of it not being true to its cause? Has the judiciary not necessarily, will you say that they have not given people a reason to think in this regard? I mean, if there were no reasons, well, why would people be uh, al alleging that the judiciary is not being unbiased? I, I agree with you, but uh, the judiciary should not be narrowed down to the act of one or two or three or four judicial officers who, for one or the other, are found to be, compro to be complicit or compromising cases. We have to look at the judiciary as a whole in assessing them. And as a whole, I think uh, the judiciary deserves some benefits of the doubt. Okay. Well, I want to thank you very much, uh, Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Dima. Thank you very much for joining us. And of course, Raymond is a lawyer. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, children voting in Kanu. When will this end? We'll talk about it when we come back. Thank you.